Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Founders Club, Navigating in the Seas of Recruitment. That's the topic we have today. So welcome. And as many of startups are face pivoting, uh, the event has already have a couple of turning points. But for now, Founders Club event will be held online and, and they are open for anyone to join. So all of you online, great to have you here with us. And, and let's get started. All right. So first we start with a, a small news from our side, from FIBAN. Then we're going to have a great interview with these two guys, uh, Mikko Kesti, uh, CEO of LoopTech, and Peter Sasonov, CEO of Dreamer. And I will be hosting and being the moderator here. And after all of this, we'll be having a word from our partner, Palava Global. So, short introduction to FIBAN for everybody. If you don't know, Finnish Business Angel Network is a 10 year old association. We have 650 plus members. All our activities are free of charge for the startups. And if you're looking to fundraise, you can go to fiban.org slash submit and leave your profile there. And and if you have a FIBAN member in your company as an investor, we are always happy to share your successful funding rounds. So let us know about those. Also, FIBAN has 35 plus partners uh, who support angels, but as well, they have a lot of, uh, lot of support for the startups as well. And you'll be hearing from one of them today, which is Palava Global, as I mentioned. So FIBAN Founders Club is a peer-to-peer -peer knowledge and growth club for founders who have FIBAN member as an investor in their organization. The core of the club is to support and inspire founders in their growth journey with the focus on successful exit. We gather founders under the same roof to share peer-to-peer -peer knowledge and network. Uh, and we have three ways how we support. One is events, one is communication support, and one is partner perks and about the perks so here we have uh, we have aws uh, we they give uh, they can give uh, 10000 worth of cloud credits this is reliable for anybody who has a fiba member in their board second there is stripe who has uh, the 20000 processing volume free for free uh, for anybody who uses stripe and HubSpot, you can get up to 90% off from their software. For more information, you can go to fiban.org slash partners and keep your eye on for the coming year because we are going to have plenty more. We're having a big focus on this. Then one great news. So Fiban Data Compass is out. So if you are, for example, wondering uh, uh, what are the what have FIBA members invested in in the in the sectors you can find those information or what are the median sizes of the investments that FIBA angels invest in you can go and see fiban.org slash data for more information but now let's get started with the program so today we have two great fellows, as I mentioned, Mikko and Pet Peter, and let's have a short introduction. Uh, so how about Mikko, would you share us who are you and what is looked at today? Thank you, Antti. So my name is Mikko Kesti, and I'm the CEO and founder of LoopTech. My background is, is actually from mechanical engineering, so I don't know anything about consumer electronics. So our company produces uh, controllers for photo, video, music, and other, other industries. So we are a hardware startup. Company is now four and a half years old. Uh, cumulatively, we've done more than 13 million euros. Uh, we, we sell throughout the whole globe. So we sell in more than 90 countries currently. Uh, <clears throat> in our team, we have 40 people, but we represent 14 different nationalities. So that's a bit different compared to other, other startups. And, and uh, 
Yes, we are now seeking seeking for growth for next year. So we are going to uh, the plan is to, to to triple our revenue from this year. This year we are hitting uh, five million euros in revenue, and next year we are uh, targeting fifteen. So high growth plans, team will grow. Recruitment is always crucial. We are focusing on recruitment, and, and recently we also hired a people and culture manager to to handle the growth and, and, and handle the recruitment. Awesome, great, great to have you. Eh? Peter, same question for you. Yes. Why you and what is Trimmer? Yes. So hi, Peter, our co-founder and CEO of Trimmer. Uh, and Trimmer is a on-demand temp staffing platform connecting businesses looking for blue-collar workers with the members of our app. So last year our uh, sales were about 1.7 mil 1.7 million. Uh, next year we're looking to a uh, uh, to also triple our uh, our, our sales. Uh, we have a uh, 15 uh, 15 uh, uh, member team at the moment. Most of them are uh, in the product development at the moment. We have raised about two and a half mil in, uh, in, in equity. Last round was an A round last summer, 1.5 million. With that, we're uh, then now expanding to other markets. So uh, that's kind of a our uh, our case uh, and also we're uh, five years old or 2015 uh, established and uh, uh, kind of growing since that and actually that's when we also met with with you Antti so so kind of that uh, my own background so I have been in startups for about 12 years so kind of not been doing any normal jobs for a while and will not do also <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, uh, kind of the first case I was with, that was a hardware startup. So uh, we did a, a wireless charging solutions for mobile phones, uh, exited that in 2013. And actually the case for, for Trimmer also came through the, uh, the same team that I was building the, the previous case with. So, but uh, yes, uh, so today we're a uh, growing uh, staffing, staffing platform and now I uh, look into a uh, enter uh, some new markets uh, here in the Nordics and of course then in Baltic so then into the central Eastern Europe uh, with the help of our latest funding. Awesome, great. And Peter, you actually mentioned that we met way back in 2015. That's uh, where the picture comes from. Look at that guy. He's yeah. like five years <laughs> you know, younger. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I will not change those pictures, you know, man, because that's like, uh, that would be, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, great times, and, and, and that was when, when, when things got started. So, well, how about uh, let's share a little bit uh, about the start of Dream and how mm. was the team then, and, and how, how did things get started? Very good question. Uh, so, kind of a very typical startup story. So, uh, in the beginning, we had a kind of an idea uh, that uh, we were actually building a consumer marketplace for kind of outsourcing your. Uh, uh, kind of small chores and tasks at home to your local neighborhood, more or less like, uh, you know, you don't have uh, time to, you know, to, to find a babysitter. So there's a platform for that. So you need somebody to help you at home in cleaning the platform for that. And kind of, uh, uh, we develop, develop the MVP for that, put that on the market. And then usually at that time, you start like measuring what happens and uh, you start realizing that everything you thought is wrong. Uh, like that's the kind of the, the, the normal case. And then you usually have like two options. Uh, the first option is to a, uh, to a um, uh, further develop the product to fit the market better, or then take the product and put that on a new market. And that's the latter one is what we also did. So kind of uh, when we started to kind of look what happens on the, uh, on, 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 the, on the marketplace, we understood that actually there were businesses, it were companies who want to use our service. And then we went to them and we asked like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Like, why are we using kind of a consumer app to find, find staff for you? And they explained that actually kind of our innovation, our solution for the problem was access to a certain type of a labor. So because of, uh, you know, all those small, you know, jobs and tasks that we had on the platform, you know, half an hour of, of helping at home or, you know, two hours of, you know, babysitting, that was, um, uh, that attracted people who were naturally inclined to do this kind of a gig job. So we're talking about, you know, gig workers, uh, you know, students or some immigrants or, you know, other people who are working uh, on a kind of a gig economy side. Uh, and that was exactly that kind of a labor that uh, the traditional businesses had trouble to find so kind of they started using our app and then we started pivoting to a uh, to the b2b side uh and a uh, natural there was a uh, quite a lot of luck to do that you also need to do with the 
with, with the tech, you know, the architecture, you know, what kind of different needs there are. But uh, since that, uh, you know, we have been on that path and we actually realized on what market we are. Uh, and that was also kind of good news because that market is freakishly big and it's kind of a fragmented offline and, you know, uh, uh, ripe for digitalization. So kind of a, a good, good news in a sense. Great. Uh, Mikko, same for you. How did things get started? What kind of team you have? So yeah, so the history of started already to 2013. So that's that's the year when I bought my first DSLR camera. So I wanted to become kind of a hobbyist photographer. And, and it was fun to take a lot of photos, but to edit them, that was a really, really painful. I didn't like the process. and. and if you think about the photographers, videographers, and so forth, <clears throat> usually they work with, with the keyboard and mouse because those tools are not really designed for photography editing or video editing and so forth. So uh, I just got an idea that, okay, let me Google like a mixer for photography editing and nothing like that was existing. So I decided to build it. Mm. <clears throat> so that's, that was the start of, of, of Lufec. But then I, you know, it took me a couple of years before I started to realize realize that. So it's like I got kids in between, got married, and, and that usual stuff. And then 2016, then I started to to to, to work more on, on the idea. We went into crowdfunding campaign, not because of getting funding. We wanted to to test the idea out there in the market, and and that was a perfect platform for us at that time. You know, and, 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 and our target was to raise 75,000 euros as in pre-sales, but we were able to get 366,000 euros. Nice. And then uh, then Adobe called me and, and <laughs> a partnership. So that's how things started. So, and and then uh, then I started to to build the team after the Indiegogo crowdfunding mm -hmm. campaign. In so you were doing it alone? Yes, I was okay. doing that alone at that time. And then... 2017, I started to build the team, and I there was a couple of things. First of all, I understood even uh, I'm an engineer from background. I understood the power of brand, and and if you create a strong brand, that can also sell a bit better than than you know not not a cute brand. And and so uh, the, one of the first hires was was a marketing manager in the company. So um and that was a that was a very wise move even now looking at them. And the second thing there was that I was I was thinking about the target audience, photographers, videographers, mm. and so forth. There's very visual people. And, and they, they can they can you know appreciate a, a strong brand, a nice brand. So I wanted also because of that reason to to you know uh, bring out a good brand. So um then I started to build the team and I always you know, wanted to build also a national team, the international team, meaning that I didn't care where you come from, what gender you represent or whatever. I just care about what you, what you can do, what expertise you bring to the company and where you can grow also. To keep in that mind that, okay, where, where this person could grow into, because I understood that this, this might be a big thing you know, in, in the future too. So, so that's why we are now 40 people, 14 different nationalities, uh, headquarters, so world headquarters is in here, Helsinki. But then we have also in, in Ukraine, a small software uh, R&D unit. So there's six people working, but we are recruiting there all the time, new, new members. Yeah, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> Miko, you've been, uh, let's go to the, the second topic, which is the how to make startup attractive. And you've been able to attract a lot of global talent into your team. So how do you actually make a startup attractive place to work? And and how have Loop Deck and you been able to attract people uh, to that journey? I think I think it is the story, you know, that we can tell a story, you know, about, you know, the background, how, how Lupec was started and, and that um, it's about storytelling and, and we've never actually thought even employer branding as such. It's just created sexy and cool, you know, accessories like, you know, the controllers are, they look really fancy and, and, and there's a lot of like um, YouTube materials, videos about unboxing and stuff like that. So, um, and and, and second thing is that it's a hardware. 
hard way some somehow it's just you know people get attracted to that somehow and especially here in Finland because the because of the Nokia background you know there's a lot of and if ever we have an open position there's at least 20 percent of the applicants are from Nokia or have somehow linked to Nokia and they've all almost said to me that that they miss hardware products that when, when Nokia mobile phones were sold to Microsoft and they they went to let's say into a for an instance to a software company working yeah they like it but still somehow they miss the hardware world and our company we do also a lot of software actually nowadays it's in more focus the software side but also the hardware so the hardware is in the center best the central piece of everything so they miss that so it's some, some something tangible for people mm. so they like that so too so I think those two, the storytelling, and that it's a it's a sexy hardware. Mm. So I think those two. <laughs> how about you, better? How about for software? How do you see like how do you attract the talent? Yeah, I think like yeah, uh, there is the always kind of the saying that you know what should they you know the founder team be you know comprising like you have the hustler, hacker, the hipster type of a thing. Of course, it depends always like uh, uh, about the people you meet and how well you get along. I think one thing that you know the people miss usually in this situation is not only about your skills, but it's also like what's the personality fit. You know, like are you in the same life situation that you know you said, you know, for example, kids, like do you if, if you would have a, a kind of founding a team where you would be the sole person, you know, to have kids and so forth, and the other ones would be, you know, completely life different life situation, they would not understand like that uh, that situation so well but i think like uh, where where it kind of stems from is uh, from the founders and from the culture that the founders actually are able to build uh we're also actually we're at this moment kind of doing actually kind of big rebranding uh, at the moment and uh, uh it's been actually been going pretty well and and from the branding that you said also it's um i personally don't see branding as being also uh, only like the customer facing uh, kind of interface but it's it's about also your culture a brand is the identity of the company and and the identity should be based on, on the founders because the founders always need to every each and every day they need to live through the the guides and and the the kind of the rules of the of the culture and that's freakishly hard if you really don't comply with that so we have been doing quite a lot of work on that and decided uh, uh kind of came out to a kind of a different brand values that we also have and then the kind of their most of a lot of them are based on also kind of on my personality because of um, more or less like also that so uh, that i can live up to those those things but uh, I, I think that's kind of a, is 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 kind of a, the, the the fit the personality uh fit uh for of the company and of the new people at the moment actually in our recruitment processes this is something that we're doing we're using uh some hate hunting services then some you know of course you know uh personal networks but you usually oh, actually those brand values and characteristics that we have we're actually using them that you know to fit that you know whether you have are you this kind of a person and you know uh, if you check those boxes then we can look at the skills you know whether the skill set is the right uh right uh for for our needs at, at the moment and then naturally kind of the the other things but uh but really like a uh, recruitment in the beginning and and kind of hiring it's a uh, uh, if the if the kind of the founder team is is not like a whole in a sense that it's not kind of attractive uh, a bunch of people to work with it's going to be super hard to kind of find the people there so kind of that's that's where it comes from you know that you need to get the team right in the beginning uh, and then if it's not right then you need to fix it you know that's the thing is I I personally don't believe in situation that you know if something goes wrong you know then it's like oh shit that's you know that's that that's it but it's more or less like then you need to step up and then you need to fix that uh and and usually, usually fixing just means that you need to talk and be honest and and straightforward about things that you know for for example that i i could say that you know i'm i do not feel that i'm actually you know a good fit for this team and then i need to make a decision that you know to leave or to you know to try to uh change myself to fit the team better uh, and, and and if this is kind of a okay that everything kind of go, goes well and you have a kind of a wholesome you know team then you can start like attracting the the new people there like with the skills and then looking at what's the fit for the culture there uh kind of our mistakes in the past that you know there's <laughs> there's a lot of them you know it's uh it's it's only by like being in a startup it's only like making making mistakes and then just you know having enough coffee to rise up after 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 that uh, but uh but you know for example 
uh, two senior people in in the beginning, uh, so that if they you know if the culture is still like uh, kind of a find trying to find it's what it is and what's the what's the product actually is, uh, that's that's something that we have done and uh, that that didn't that kind of ended up in a situation where we need to kind of terminate the relationships uh, in in the pretty pretty beginning and then also you cannot hire two junior people because the two junior people startups like. First, I'm sorry, this is kind of going back and forth, this, this discussion, but, you know, it's something that's actually kind of a, I would want to see in our startup ecosystem and cultures is, is that's, that's actually, it's a very harsh environment. It, it, it requires a lot. Uh, and, and it's not like a place for, you know, for super junior people to actually kind of do, uh, or at least kind of be responsible of, of kind of the whole core of, of what you're doing. It's, it's a good place to learn things. But, you know, if you look at the, you know, for example, in US, the average uh, successful entrepreneur is something like 45 years old, uh, had like previous cases before that. But it's like really like the startups are for the people who really kind of know what to do and how to execute and then kind of push, push that forward and then attract the people to kind of a uh, to to kind of do those things. Of course, there are many different different stories and, and people like to uh have this winner's bias you know zuckerberry a good example but you know again people <laughs> don't remember that you know this guy was he was already at 15 when he sold his first company to microsoft you know that was a kind of a guy who already kind of everybody knew that you know this is going to be something you know perhaps not you know the one who responds to congress about <laughs> our about their sneaky business model but <laughs> but but still like uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a harsh environment and uh uh, for people to want to participate and be there, you know, that they need to understand that. So that's kind of one of part of the, you know, the honesty and transparency uh, that I think needs to be there. Uh, and they, uh, uh, when you have like kind of the, the team um, kind of get together, you have like uh, some sort of, a, you know, the pieces are in place and then kind of uh, are starting to hire the people there uh, with, with, with the fit and of course with the skills. The hard thing is that, you know, usually you need to pivot at least once, you know, your case. So kind of what are the talents that you need, for example, before the pivot, during the pivot, after the pivot. So we had exactly that, that kind of case that um, once we started to a, um, uh, well, once we started to kind of, uh, you know, uh, actually start the pivot to go from the, you know, this uh, consumer marketplace to a B2B ser service, we started to look for people, you know, who could help us to kind of do the sales. I'm personally, I'm the, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst salesperson in the world. I don't know anything about sales. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't understand how salespeople work. I, I'm kind of an engineer in my background. I want to measure everything. I'm data oriented. I'm kind of a, like, what's your skill? You're selling, you're selling stuff. What's your skill? Like, how do you measure that? Uh, but but kind of uh, then we started to hire like people. Uh, I, I kind of uh, raised a little bit a, a bit more uh, for for kind of doing the B two B pivot. Uh, and the whole idea was to kind of hire salespeople and then of course you know fine tune the product to fit the market a little bit uh, a bit better. But we fought, we we uh, we hired three uh, kind of a salespeople uh, with the background kind of a more or less like in basic you know sales you know and consumer sales. And we kind of thought okay now I'm going to give you like a um, you know, a um, uh, assignment that you now go there and you just try to sell this stuff to anybody and we see kind of what happens. And only one of the persons uh, were kind of successful on that. Uh, on, on that, a, uh, then we kind of understood that, okay, there's actually is a need uh, on, 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 this, a, uh, uh, on this market for this kind of a service. And then we started to kind of uh, understand that, okay, what are the characteristics of the market that we actually need to possess in order to actually scale there. So kind of a for, for begin, before the pivot, different skills, during the pivot, different skills, after the pivot, different skills. So that's, and, and, and people usually kind of a think this uh, from that point of view that the product changes, but it's, it's also the team changes because the people who are doing those things, they don't, you know, if, if, if you are the person who kind of, a, I was nominated for you to do consumer marketing, uh, kind of uh, to, to sell that product to the people, I don't need you anymore. And if you're not able to actually evolve before that, we need to, you know, take different paths. And that's kind of part of, of kind of, uh, of that story. So when you're pivoting, your team also pivots and, and your, your, the people who you're working with also need to change. And that's something that, you know, I, I think also people talk uh, too little of that, you know, pivot is just something that we decided to do something different today. <laughs> Shit, no, it's, it's, it's about like really kind of finding the right people who can you help you to, to do those things there. And, and uh, 
it's hard because of uh it it's personal it's, it's always personal because you know until I, I hired you to to do this kind of a thing but actually we're not doing that anymore so kind of a you know what until it was a nice ride but you know this this it doesn't work <laughs> so 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 and and that's 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 hard uh so kind of that's a uh, yeah. but that's just part that you need to take the responsibility and face those things yeah i was thinking that like you know you, you mentioned the fixing the team and i think that is the most important thing that you as a founder have to take care of you know and, and i bet that every entrepreneur in, in in their journey they at some point they need to fix the team and if they don't fix the team they, they will not they will not be a dream team yes yes so so every entrepreneur has to fix the team and when to fix the team I, i'd say that it's always immediate do yep. it as soon as possible yep. don't be late and trust your gut feeling in this one too so kind of one of my favorite books of all time is ben horowitz's uh, um the hard thing about hard things that's you know that's man that's a good book every founder should read that because that's very honest about like uh, how 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 hard things can be uh and and kind of there is a, this one uh one one thing that ben also talks about that you know most of the uh most important um uh kind of uh, decisions have not tested uh he's uh, how, how smart he is but how uh, of of his courage so that it's not about being smart but it's about being brave to do those decisions that actually are very you know challenging they hurt people they always kind of end up in a situation that you cannot have everybody happy and then you just need to decide who is going to be the people uh, who's going to be the person who's going to be unhappy whether it's you whether whether it's your investor whether it's your team members of who is going to be and that's kind of the thing that you know the most challenging uh decisions always are testing your courage and not your brain in a sense exactly. I agree totally. and the decision might hurt now but in the long run people will be more happy yep yep yeah great conversation um and let's take it a little bit back uh great conversation but uh, how how about that uh, recruiting the first people so what kind of things you actually take into consideration there maybe Nick, you can start <laughs> it's 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 the most difficult you know thing you can you can uh, encounter when you hire the first first actually because the risk is so huge but the more people you hire the risk minimizes every time so what to take in, into consideration i'd say that yes checking background is of course it's 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 necessary and uh, calling the reference calls and and and, and but i think just trust your gut feeling also in that one if your gut feeling says that maybe it's not right it's 99 there don't don't hide it especially the first ones and it's like when it's when it's the most you know important hire of your life then really think about it really yeah i i totally agree on that it's usually if you have any red flags and when the shit hits the fan there are just going to be huge red flags at that moment it's like a uh, there's again uh there's the saying that you know that uh when things go well it doesn't really matter how good of a company you have but when the things go bad that's all that matters and things always go bad exactly. so 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 that's that's kind of the thing there is that if you have very you no know, red flags about something usually in this kind of a hard situation they are just those or those things are just going to emerge and they're going to be not like a uh, times two but it's going to be like a uh you it is going to be like times one 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 hundred thousand and that's kind of the thing it's like in relationships it's the same thing that you know if if you have a you know a um, if if you are in a relationship where you know that somebody is in certain situations you know a certain type uh, or kind of reacts to certain things in a certain way and when you know that when when the really kind of the shit hits the fan then you know that it's going to be exactly the same reaction is going to be uh just a lot more intense and that that's how it goes it's uh and and uh yeah and one one of my golden rules is is that don't ever hire your friend yeah because it's be too <laughs> e you think that it's too easy you can trust your friend you always go out with your friend to party to ski whatever yeah. and then you think that oh that would be fantastic you know have a good time with your friend yep. but the but the fact is that you've never worked with that friend yep. so you don't know how the friend acts on a workplace yes and yes work 
Yeah. So don't do that. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the uh, I think it was last year uh, the book by uh, Eric Schmidt and uh, uh, and some other uh, other people they wrote the book about uh, Bill Campbell uh, the the guy who was uh, doing the coaching for the Silicon Valley people the pre previous uh, yeah, sports coach and uh, he had this one quote you know that don't hire your fucking friends <laughs> that was not really that was good <laughs> and, and this is the same thing this, that he was preaching to the silicon valley people so kind of a, i think that's a, a, a kind of a, yeah and but and that's very true because also like uh in business relationships because you need to do sometimes very harsh decisions uh uh and if you have a kind of different relationship there behind already you know uh, for example it's a relative uh, or it's a kind of a friend or it's as being like your previous you know it's, it's your ex oh, i don't know that would be a weird situation <laughs> but again if, if that if, if it would be something like that it's, it's you always have the baggage of the of, of the kind of different way to communicate like in our team also like uh in in the uh, we had like four founders uh me uh then my uh, uh colleague from the previous case my icon and so she is a uh, now a uh, uh she actually made an, uh, a new exit already on uh, this golden green like uh, the, the pulled out she she exited that to colleague some time ago uh kind of working as a kind of mentor for me so thank you maya for everything you've done actually maya was the person who was responsible for me to move into startups 2008, she called me. She was looking for an electrical engineer. I thought she was uh, trying to sell me magazines, and I was very angry at her at phone. But then I met with her, and then you know, since that, you know, I did not do any kind of decent work. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, so so kind of that. We had me, Maya, and then uh, Matthias, uh, who's who's uh, doing designs uh, for us, kind of the visual visual person, kind of if if you would want to think about the hipster, so that would be the hipster you know, in, in the in the team. And then also Matthias's brother, uh, Mika, uh, Mika Makitalo was uh, also part of, of, of the original team, but he's not with us anymore. So, and one of those, uh, there was, of course, you know, many things, uh, especially after the pivot, like uh, the skill set was, the fit was not right, but also there were some, some things that, you know, overlapping skills, for example, with Matthias. Uh, and they, uh, then uh, there were some, he was also, he had a lot of uh, other things on his table and I kind of, I didn't feel that he was committed so well to so much to the, to the case. So there was kind of quite a lot of, you know, kind of turbulent phases there, but also one uh, one thing also that's, uh, you know, because he was a brother of Matthias. So kind of, they had a completely different way of communicating before the case. So kind of, of course, that was a kind of a, some people might think that, oh, that's nice that, you know, you know how to communicate, you know how to do those things, but shit, no, it doesn't go like that. It's like, if you, if you're kind of a, if you already have a, a way to communicate a different channel, different way to speak, a different way to do things and taking that into a business environment, especially in an environment which, which is freakishly hard, like startup, that's, you know, that's, that's the kind of the worst place you can kind of got to kind of go with, you know, if you want to kind of uh, do a solid, solid, uh, you know, career. Uh, so, so kind of that's also uh, during that time, it was, it was clear that it had an impact on, on how we did things because there was the kind of a, a kind of a, I wouldn't say baggage, baggage is a, wrong term but it was there was the different way to communicate and you take the different way to communicate into a, a, a kind of a, a professional uh, framework and it, it it has its impact and uh, that's a kind of a, had also like impact of course on the decisions of, of how we kind of uh, how we build the team forward there yeah that's interesting yeah but, but hey how about what to take into consideration when the team grows that's a good question <clears throat> I think naturally the cultural fit becomes even more important when the company grows because that's usually the number one reason why people also leave or they need to be let go. So the cultural fit and how to test that, that's, that's also like a, a big question. And, and uh, so take that into consideration when, when the team grows. Mm. And I'd say that also if ever there are problems, then you as a founder, you must be problem solver, solver in those cases. So take immediate actions, don't wait at all. And, and start discussing openly with people about the problems that they, they are existing. Mm. And, and try to try to get a feeling for your employees, for the team, that they can also be part of the decision making when it comes to the, uh, how we communicate between, between people and between teams and so forth. So those are, those are really important in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. How do you test culture? It, there's not a way, but I'd say that they, you know, I've been thinking like if, if there's a really important person or key person joining or key position, then go out and have a beer. 
mm. try to try mm. to also set up set up a, a interview session which is not informal in that sense so then you will find out more about the person and, and i always like in job interviews if if i ask people that okay what kind of person you are that, that they tell something about their personal life too not only about the work life and the work personality so it just depends and yet again your gut feeling i i made a mistake in the beginning but i trusted only the reference calls and i i trust that you know the, the linkedin profile stuff and the, things like that but then i noticed that actually it is far more important to listen to your gut feeling in those Mm. And I was right, Mark. That you know, I, I should have done that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally agree on, on that side. Like the personality fits. Like, uh, also have a background uh, uh, in sports. I have been a uh, at some point a uh, kind of uh, using quite a lot of time in in kind of um uh in competitive uh sports uh in in combat sports so kind of i have a uh finnish championship and uh i was also the third in U europe uh in in thai boxing so that was 2014 before kids so kind of uh, that's uh, kind of when you had more more time for yourself <laughs> but uh there is also like uh, we did because like when you are in a um, uh kind of uh, in a situation where you're really like uh, in a tough spot you know, and and what what can be kind of one of the kind of the most uh, toughest spots where it can be if it's like there are hundreds of people watching you when you are kind of, uh, you know, fighting with somebody else. So kind of that's a, that's a very kind of, uh, that's a very tough spot to be. And there's like a, a saying that that's not the place where the mother actually comes to help you. That's really like, that's the place where you need to, you know, actually step up. Uh, and a, um, when, when I was also kind of coaching other people and, and also I tried to understand myself, like what are the drivers for me? How can I in this situation uh kind of get the most out of me like who am i in this situation i i kind of believe that you know usually in in kind of these situations where you are very much under pressure those your innate characteristics actually they came out you know people can fake a lot of things when things are oh, things are well but you know when things are bad or kind of you're under a, kind of a huge amount of stress that's usually when your innate personality can, can, comes <clears throat> comes out and we did this kind of personality tests. Uh, I use this framework from Helen Fisher. So she's this, she this evolutionary anthropologist uh, uh, and who did actually for match.com some time ago, this kind of personality evaluation, kind of understanding that what kind of people actually match with each other. That was kind of a romantic framework, but uh, I was very intrigued in that after I read the, uh, after I read the book because of, uh, and I then did those tests and tried to understand like who am I and like what are the kind of uh, the, the key things within within me who kind of um, uh, kind of uh, help me to to kind of uh, um, succeed and kind of uh, go, go forward and we did this also for the other uh, uh, kind of team members uh, in, in our sports uh, team like uh, what what kind of they are what kind of things are driving them forward and so forth and I've been actually using that also in, in in the business club then after that I put in people to actually do that test you know uh, although it's kind of a hard to, you know, to uh, yeah, perhaps explain that, you know, this is a romantic test, but, you know, do that, please, <laughs> you know, but, but actually it kind of, those usually have actually revealed a lot, like, you know, whether you're kind of a dopamine, uh, you know, driven person, whether you're a testosterone driven person, estrogen, or, you know, serotonin driven person. So you can kind of understand that how do you actually match with that person? So there is a kind of also ways to measure that personality not only like with, with the beers of course of course it's good because then you can kind of get to the sense of you know uh who are you where do you actually come from what's your family you know what did you do in the beginning what to what school did you go but who, who were your friends that all kind of builds up who you are i i'm firm believer believer in that that we are kind of a you know a, a mix of uh, nature and nurture in that sense that you have your uh you have your genetic genetic uh temperament and then you have your environment and 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 the Kind of the 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 how you navigate within this environment actually evolves you to who you are i kind of um uh so so th that's actually been kind of a very helpful for me also to understand like who are the people and with whom i actually also kind of click and there's been very clear you know a correlation uh, when i have been kind of doing those tests with the different people in different situations that you know with whom i actually kind of also feel that i get energy and and to whom i can also give, give my energy if if those personality traits actually are kind of a matching there all right guys we are getting into the very end so it's time for the final tips for other founders what kind of things they should take into consideration and so on so Petra, go ahead yeah it's uh that's that's a that's a very good question i kind of uh, if there is something that um 
that I, I, I would want to say is that, you know, talk with other people, talk with people who have done what you are planning to do um, beforehand, because of, you know, world is full of successful people or kind of a, people who have done already what you want, want to do, they have done it before, and they can very much give you a kind of clear advice that, you know, you cannot learn from, you don't have time to do so many mistakes that you can learn everything. So kind of, it makes sense to learn from other people's mistakes and listen, listen to them. Uh, other, and, and, you know, startup ecosystem is very open. You can almost talk you can talk with anybody you can go with lunch with, with, with anybody you can kind of just just imagine and that's one of the best things that i kind of uh, like about the uh, ecosystem and then uh, again there is quite a lot of literature you know the horowitz is you know hard thing about hard things anybody who wants to become an entrepreneur read that book and then reassess do you want to really go through that because that's that's you know that's that's pretty that's that's uh you know it's, it's it usually like people talk about you know failures about that it's just you know a uh, something that happened and you know then i learned from that but there's a there's a big gap between this you 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 make a mistake uh you you feel su super bad about that and then there's this kind of a timeline that nobody talks about that how do i rise, rise up after that and there is of course there there are ways to do those things but that's just that's just goes into your kind of a guts and how well you are able to actually kind of uh uh, withstand uh, the, the 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 failure, uh, the the emotional baggage that comes through the failure, and then kind of uh, rise up after that. But 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 uh, yeah, I think the book actually is pretty good for that. So kind of uh, do mistakes, but then then remember that actually after that you also need to pay for those mistakes, and then you can learn, and then you can do other other beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And I think you know as a founder because you you need to meet a lot of people, and you will meet a lot of people and, and always when you meet people think in your head that could actually that person be a fit to my team even though you don't have an open position at the moment but someday you might have a right position for that kind of person open so my tip is a b h always be hiring <laughs> so always be hiring Great advice. Thank you guys. And Palava Global, uh, let me share the screen. Mikko and Peter, thank you. And <laughs> let me just get this done. Yes. So next we have Salva Hanninen from Palava Global sharing insights how they can help your company grow global. So go ahead, Sala. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I will, yeah, what we what we do at Balava is, is two things, really. Uh, one is helping companies build globally successful products and also building um, a strategy that will help you with your world domination. Um, I'll talk talk about that a little bit through the lenses of, of today, um, of what you've been talking about this morning. Um, and actually, I, I don't think <laughs> that um, the primary goal in, in hiring is actually recruiting someone. It's, it's filling a skills gap, right? Um, and that's what we think about constantly when we're building a strategy for a team. We look for a skills gap uh, in the team because there will always be skill gaps. <laughs> As you know, when you're growing quickly, um, it is impossible to, to be able to do everything and to know everything and so forth. And once we've recognized that skill gap, um, we always think about, okay, is the best way to fill this skill gap actually to hire someone uh, or is it to outsource this? Especially if it's a very specific thing. I've seen um, startups, for example, uh, hire someone to do market research for them. And to me, that sounds, that sounds a bit crazy. I think that's a bit of a waste, right? Because um, for startups, you need people who can do lots of things at the same time. If it's a very specific thing, then I would rather outsource than hire, right? Or then the third option is, um, do I train the people I already have, right? Do they, you talked about potential earlier. Do these people have the potential um, to learn something and so forth? Um, and also, I think it's really important to understand at which stage you want to be hiring people and what kind of people. So for tech, tech people, Maybe it doesn't matter as much, but especially for business development people, you want to be doing it at the, at the right time, right? We, we talk a lot about, um, for example, choosing the right market based on data. And then 
also after that you would build a strategy based on based on data right and at that stage when you know where you're going um and how you want to go there only at that stage can you know um what kind of skills you need internationally right so that's also something to think about like what is the right stage for for what kind of um skills because it's true you are going to end up uh hiring and firing quite a lot of people um as, as you're growing but to minimize that and to, to make sure you have the right uh people i would make sure that i do it at the at the right um time um but yeah um a bit more about uh balava so we help we help uh, especially startups um with 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 both strategy and operational side so after after building that killing um, killer strategy um, we also help with operational sites like uh, digital marketing for example finding the right people as well um, we have we have a couple of hundred of partners around the world uh, who can help with with legal issues with recruitment um, all these other things um, so if if that's something you're you're thinking about please um, contact me. <laughs> you can find me on LinkedIn or, or email me. Uh, the information is, is there on the screen. Um, happy to happy to have a chat. And if you have any thoughts about uh, recruitment at the moment internationally, happy to have a chat with you. Uh, no strings attached. Um, so yeah, let me know if you, if you need any help with that. Thank you. Thank you, Sarla. And Yes, that's all from the program. Thank you, Mikko and Peter, for joining us here today. It was great having the talk with you guys. And everybody online, thank you for joining. And remember to answer the survey coming your way. So see you again next year. And from all of us, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Happy COVID-19 Christmas. Stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>